Hi everyone and welcome back to Rich Reviews and today we're at the Classic Motor Hub in Bybury. Today is the Italian Coffee and Classics Day. Um, obviously the Classics is modern, modern Classics as well as Legacy Classics. So you've got 328s, 308s, loads of 458s for the good or bad of it. Obviously 360s, 430s. Um, let's have a look around, pick out some of the special cars first of all because we've got some very special cars here today. Um, and uh, we'll walk you through the different cars that are here. So pride of the show today, or pride of the event today, are two Muras. Here we've got a red and gold Mura. This is a Mura SV. The Mura is one of my favourite cars, if not the favourite car of mine of all time. And this looks like it's been fully renovated, absolutely stunning car. As you can see, that only certain models had what was known as the eyelashes, so this hasn't got the eyelashes. Obviously the headlights pop up, got the front grills, gold wheels, centre knockoff for the, um, for the locators for the wheels. Just have a look at the interior. It uh, looks like it's been renovated on the outside, but on the inside it looks like it's um, original, which is quite nice, good to see. H, gear selection, gate, definitely one of my favourite cars ever in the world. So today we've got the red and gold car and we'll pop across and we'll show you the, the light green car as well. Okay, so here we've got the Lamborghini Mio RS. Now you can see the differences in the two configurations. Here you've got the actual, eye, what's known as the eyelashes for the headlights, which is a signature design for the Mio um, this, this is in very good condition. It looks like it's original. It may have been renovated earlier and uh, some, quite some time ago because it's shown some pattern on the paintwork. If you look on the inside, you can see it's a black, black Nero leather interior. It looks very good condition. Some pattern on the, on the handbrake. And obviously the, they're all manual, so it's the uh, H design on the gearbox gate. Beautiful car. Just for those who didn't know, the actual design of the doors was, was, it was configured in such a way that when you open the doors, this section, is so that when you open both doors, it resembles the horns of a bull. That's why the car was designed in that way. So back in those days, it was more of a, a lending towards how they wanted the car to look, as opposed to the constraints that we have today uh, with heavy legislation to make the car safer. And of course, the mirrors are well known for situations where the engines are literally transverse they, they implemented the same design as the Mini, or they copied the, the transverse engine design of the Mini with regards to putting the engine in a transverse format uh, configuration. And the actual V12 sits just behind the actual passenger and the driver, and the fuel, the, the fuel rails sit um, in front of the actual engine between the passenger and driver and the actual engine itself. And they are configured directly over the actual exhaust manifold. So. If the fuel lines fail, fuel goes onto exhaust manifolds and the car goes up in flames and these are well known for going up in flames. So the first thing that these cars have done to them, um, if, if the drivers and owners have got any sense, is that they reinforce all the actual fuel lines and the fuel lines are reg regimentally checked and commonly these cars have an actual extinguisher system fitted internally into the car um, so that if the car does catch fire, uh, you can easily put the, the, the fire out um, rather than just carrying an extinguisher in the boot or in the actual car. Here we've got a, a blue 488, the next model up, the successor to the 458, it's just leaving here. Not sure of the name of this colour, but uh, it's in be beautiful configuration, quite a high spec. So here we have a 550 GT Zagato, it's a very rare model of a car, very interesting design. As you can see from the front, 
It's almost like it's got torpedo bays on the on the on either side flanking the actual centre grille of the car. And as you come round to the back, it's got an interesting design cue. It's actually got clear rear rear light covers, and it it almost looks like it's trying to actually look as though it's going forwards and backwards at the same time. And it's only really because of the actual reflectors, not reflectors, it's only really because the lights on the rear are actually clear and they're not actually what we used to expect, um, coloured in red. So as we can see on the inside, it's got a manual gearbox and it's um, crema interior. It looks in, in really, really good condition. Here we have a 599 SA Aperta. Love the accents on this car. You've got the silver accents on the A-pillars and on the door mirrors. Actually, yeah, they are door mirrors here, sometimes wing mirrors, but the door mirrors here. Um, on the buttresses as well, you've got the silver accents on the buttresses and a metallic red paint. It could be Rosso Scuderia or it could be Rosso, Rosso Marinello. If you look at the inside, you've got the accents carried forward. So from the buttresses and from the A-pillars and the, and the top of the, the screen, you've got the silver accents carrying forward into the actual dash and across the top of the dash as well. Lever Sports, um, carbon fibre seats. So this is a Super America. We believe it's a 575 Super America in which case only 559 of these were ever made. The only unfortunate thing about this, I actually do like it, but the actual front configuration has a bit of an NSX look about it. A lot of people will hound me for that, I'm sure. But if we come around to the back of the configuration of the car, you can see how the actual the roof opens up. It actually swivels directly on, this, on the centre of rear behind, uh, section behind the actual uh, seats. It just literally flips back and then latches on the top of the boot. So you have uh, this open boot section or this top boot section which is very concave which allows the actual um, hood, the roof, to actually come down and fit directly onto that section and latch down. You can see it's a single clutch gearbox, automated paddle shift single clutch gearbox, coloured in a Rosso Corsa with a black Nero interior. And again, um, as we had with the 599SA, here we've got the, the piping, the same colour piping down the sides of the seats which try and bring the exterior colour, the exterior bodywork colour into the actual interior as well. Not a, not a great colour match on the actual side pipe, but it does actually lend, um, bring, the, bring the external body colour into the actual interior, which is quite good. Um, it's a good pattern on the seats as well, so quite well used. If you look at the bolsters and the actual seat squab, showing some signs of wear there, which means the car's been used, which is, which is a good thing. And here we've got a, a Rosso Corsa 246 GT. Obviously, Dino, well, well known as a Dino because it was branded after, after Enzo Ferrari's son who passed away. So this was done in a commemorative, this brand was created as a commemorative brand for his son. One of the things I think I've mentioned before, but I really love about the Dino is the little quaint little latches you get to actually open the car. Beautiful design. So here we actually have a 360 Spider, black on black 360 Spider. It actually looks like it's a Challenge Stradal because they put the tricolour stripe down the centre, um, but they've they put that stripe on and it seems to be like it's trying to look like an actual stra Challenge Stradal, but it's not. It's actually a 360 Spider. If you come around the back, you can see it's actually got the, the Challenge grille on the back, which is a common replacement. It was either optioned from new on the 360s, Obviously, if it wasn't a Challenge, challenge uh, car, it was optioned from new or they actually added on later. So that's very common to have the, the Challenge grille. Standard practice with the 360s, of course, you've got the, um, the open engine cover so you can actually see the plenums of the engine. Um, the actual, these are the actual plenums on top, actually. They're not the actual rocker covers. The rocker covers, in, in, in effect, the engine is actually lower down in the car. Uh, the interior, you've got, you've got black with grey grey stitching and you've got actually grey carbon fibre down the centre which is uh, which is quite interesting and a nice little plaque there as well and this is um, you've got this the grey accents grey carbon fibre accents around on the actual steering wheel and on the actual air conditioning system as well so here we have a 360 Modena this is almost like a polar silver polar silver is a Porsche colour so this is like a um, I don't know what this colour is called obviously it's a light blue but like a polar silver silver blue Manual car, which is the, definitely the version you want if you've got a 360 Modena. Um, single plate clutches um, aren't as uh, reliable as obviously the later dual clutch systems that were put in the later cars from the uh, 458 onwards. Next to the 360 Modena, we have this very highly spec 458 Spider. It's actually got the carbon fibre canards on the front as well. You can always tell when a 458 has been highly spec because if it has carbon, carbon fibre canards, then you can pretty much guarantee the rest of the car 
has got a very high spec too with regards to carbon fibre. And if you look down the side of the car, the actual side skirts are actually in carbon fibre as well, again denoting that it's a very highly spec car. B post carbon fibre, you've got the driving zonal carbon fibre, you've got the centre console carbon fibre and the strips, centre sections and the actual um, air vents are all carbon fibre as well. This has got the beige interior and the Alcantara centres to the actual seats to the carbon fibre seats, race seats. So it's got the carbon fibre race seats with the Alcantara centre sections which is um, beautiful, very very nice. And coming around the back, the rarest of rares with 458 specifications, you actually have the whole rear diffuser is carbon fibre as well. That is very rare because in general with 458s, those take a beating. So you're a brave person if you spec a carbon fibre rear diffuser because um, I don't know if they're actually weaker than the standard um, plastic versions that you have on the cars, but um, it's expensive to spec a carbon fibre rear diffuser. The actual centre rear rear section of the car, which is usually carbon fibre and high-spec cars actually, is in the body colour, so that's quite a surprise. So we're going to close out from the hub now. We'll do a bit more content as we're on our drive back. This is the one in the centre sections that they actually have where they display cars and obviously the main car park behind as well. So we'll, we'll close out from here and you'll join us on the drive back. Oh, 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 oh